the show, Jim. No problem. I'm just gonna say you should you you are running the show today. <laughs> I need that that collar would have come in handy. You know, <laughs> First, zap me right there. Right. I have to ask you something, by the way. You said some um you made a comment like I don't know, five weeks ago or something. I don't remember yeah. how many episodes ago. But you said something interesting that I never heard of before. And I want to ask you about it. And you need to ex- expound on it. Is it expound? Do people say expound? Expand or expound? Yeah. Right. <laughs> a combo swing plane. You mentioned that. You you kind of slipped it in without much of an – which is fine. No big deal. Without right. an explanation, though. And I've never heard it before. And I got very intrigued. So let's go over that. What is a combo – swing plane what's the definition of that and what hitters that you can think of off the top of your head actually have that combo swing plane well a combo swing plane there's two planes to the swing and sometimes people talk about different planes and you don't really know which one you're talking about so there's a plane that is um correlated to the the pitch trajectory as it relates to the ground so the pitch dropping from the pitcher's hand to the catcher's mitt is on a plane of say negative 10 degrees okay coming down Mm -hmm. but then you also have a plane of your swing that goes around your body right i mean we rotate and our hand path is somewhat circular or rotational so our barrel path is is cir- circular okay it's not a straight line you can't take a straight line and rotate at some point if you're a right-handed batter your barrel moves to the left or if you're a left-handed batter it moves to the right so you swing off of the plane if you're out in front so making sure we line up both would be your combo swing plane making sure you know you talk about the guys um i can't think of his name right now but he's he's uh it's the farm whatever in Vegas, that guy, and he has, he's, he's the big scissor guy, right? Where he has these things and no, you kind of slip scissors. as you hit, which, which is kind of, you know, like that's what it, it is, what it is, right? That's his training tool. But the idea that he's preaching is, is good. You know, his, his, the idea of getting your barrel to make sure that it doesn't pull off. It doesn't over rotate by making sure your body doesn't over rotate is, is making sure you're staying on point. Your barrel is moving maybe towards the opposite field a little bit more which I do a lot um, with my players. We do a lot of that. We don't, you know, we're, we're at a more stable base working on that, but it, the idea is the same. So making sure that we're both our direction, I guess that's the best way to put it, the direction of our barrel path, not pulling off, and then the barrel path not dropping underneath the pitch plane or going down too much through the pitch plane. We have to make sure that both of those are consistent. And if they are, then we maximize our barrels. We maximize... Not just being on plane, but not hitting off the end. I have a lot of players that their swing plane matches the pitch plane really well, but they always hit the ball off the end of the bat. They just, for some reason, their hands go to the pull side a little bit too quick, or they don't extend at the right time. And so matching those two guys up is really, really important for not only consistency and making contact, but then maximizing the exit velocity as well by hitting the barrel. I got to tell you, I'm speaking for myself here. Overrated, underrated, the scissors. Oh, completely overrated. <laughs> completely overrated. It's fucking. Just... I think it happens. Oh, of course, it, it happens naturally. It's, I mean, it's happened it's for happened since the they've game. been playing the game. Um, you know, forcing that move versus teaching the move, uh, you know. It's not an absolute, own. that's for sure. To each their own. No, but the people who teach it, it, I'm speaking for myself. The people yeah. who teach it, though, make it an absolute based off their science but it's not yeah. an absolute it's not i'm sorry okay that's why you're the best in the business jim i'm speaking for myself here jake is not speaking right now for the on this topic <laughs> i'm speaking for myself on the lab Epstein hitting podcast <laughs> right now at this moment i love every i love a little bit of everybody you love a little bit of everybody i don't yeah. i always find something that i can take doesn't mean I'll agree with everyone. It doesn't mean that I'll, but I'll listen to everyone. And I will say there's usually something that makes me better that I can take away listening to other people. Even as, I mean, that, that, the farm board is a very drastic, right? I mean, that's a, it's a very drastic move. Um, just like the, um, what's his real name? Richard, um, teacher man his his move is a very drastic move but 
there are parts of I, I those can. drastic moves that I really like. I can. And so maybe it works for their players. I have to I have to kind of take hitting, pieces of hitting it. Hitting instruction has turned into professional wrestling. We've got the far <laughs> we've got the farm board. That's like their little group, right? Right. What yeah, do they used to like, call that in wrestling when you have like a group of wrestlers? They're like in one yes, group. And that's are. their group. And then you've got the teacher teacher uh what's his face? And he yeah, has his he, uh you know moniker. You yeah. know, it's 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 really something. Remember Mean Gene? No, Mean Gene had to be before your time. No, I remember Mean Gene. Mean yeah. Gene, he was the guy. There was one they, time where, who was it that was yelling right? at him? One of the wrestlers was yelling at Mean Gene. And in his announcer voice, he goes, don't you yell at me. And Mean Gene had a mean mustache. He did. Yeah, All he was very South tan, Berlin. too. Mean Gene yeah. was in good shape. He w- he could have easily become a wrestler. Who was... Uh, uh, <laughs> Was it uh, did Andre? Was it Andre the Giant that that put his hands around his neck or something and choked him or you know whatever? Maybe that's a big hand. Do you want to see something interesting? My cousin sent me this. He, it was Andre the Giant holding like a beer can. Hold on. It would have it would have looked like we're holding not even the small soda cans anymore. It'd be like a, us holding a one of those old things that used to hold film. His uh, his hand size, sixteen inches. Andre the Giant. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So if he's grabbing Mean Gene's neck. That's not good for Mean Gene. Right. Assuming I, I want to see. I want to see. An, I want to see. Um. Never mind. Let's move on. Overrated. Underrated. Tired of these mm-hmm. fucking hitting, hitting. Do you watch uh, Ted Lasso at all? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. It just reminds me of one of the guys, Roy Kent. He doesn't like to blow the whistle, so he just yells, whistle, whistle, to get people's yeah. attention. That's kind of like the shot caller idea. Oh, a stance doctor, Steve, too. He's got a, he's got a nick, nickname as well. He does? Stance yeah. doctor? Dance doctor Steve. Yeah. He'd be in the main event. <laughs> this episode's really gotten off track. 